Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Today, I want to talk to you about shifting your energy when you're selling so that you feel better doing it, so you're more likely to take sales actions more often in your business and so that you make more money in your business because sales truly is the portal to making more money, right? You may not like selling, but you probably like what selling brings you, money, right? Sales is like you connecting your free stuff in your business, right, to your paid stuff for your audience. Um, Just like I tell a lot of my um, clients who are a little further in business, once you've already mastered sales and you're selling out your programs, right, then you're working on team building. And a lot of times initially, people don't want to build a team, but they want what the team will get them, right, which is more free time with their kids. (laughs) So they're like, I don't really want to let go. I don't really want to train team, but I want what team will get me. Same thing with sales, right? Initially, now I love selling, right? But initially I didn't. But how I got myself to do it was realizing like, ooh, sales is the thing I do to get the thing I want, which is money and clients, right? Um, So I guess I kind of already dove right in, but we're going to talk about that today. And I hope this is really useful for you. Um, as you dive into whatever it is you're selling right now. In fact, I want you to say out loud right now, what is it that you're selling in your business? What's for sale? (laughs) Is it a one-on-one offer? Is it a group coaching offer? Say it out loud right now. And that's the thing that by the end of this episode, podcast episode, I want you to feel more excited to go out there and sell, more excited to go out there and share what it is. Um, And as always, you know, if you want my support around selling out your beautiful offer, refining your offers, growing and scaling your business, we'd love to invite you to my mentorship, Sell With Heart. The next round opens um, in just a few weeks. And so you can book a free clarity call with me and I'm happy to help you you know, work through one sales block or whatever is holding you back and answer if my support is a fit for what you need to sell because I love (laughs) seeing you completely change the way you think and feel about money and sales is my favorite thing, right? Because that means that you're able to create the, your dream life, but also that you're able to impact people more and more clients, right? Okay, so we're going to talk about shifting your sales energy, but first, (laughs) I just wanted to say, before I hit record on this podcast episode, I got a notification that my Amazon packages are here, so I ran out to the front door. They're sitting right here in front of me. I'm taking my kids to Disneyland this week. I'm really excited, and so I Amazoned a few things for them. I'm that mom that likes to buy, like, the glowing lightsabers before we get to the park so that, like, we don't have to, like... (laughs) So I bought all the things. They're little waste packs. You can follow me on Instagram is if you want to see, I'll share like the little, how I prep for the theme park. Um, you guys have been giving me really good Disney tips too. So thank you. I, um, okay. One more personal thing and then I'll dive in. I, this weekend, it was just kind of like a funky weekend for me personally, just going through a few things. And so I did a lot of resting and I even watched some TV. (laughs) I watched some Netflix. I watched working moms. Have you guys seen that? And I was watching season six of Working Moms. And in that season, the main character, I can't even remember her name right now, but she realizes like, ooh, maybe I'm like a workaholic. Like maybe I'm a little too attached to my work. And it was really useful for me to see some of her, I don't know, but reflections and behaviors as I was like, oh yeah. Like, I just want to make sure that like, I think when you're at the start of business, like you have to hustle and you have to like put yourself out there. Right. But I think like for me, as I've grown and scaled my business, I continually have to remind myself like, Anna, yes, keep growing. Yes. Keep leaning in. Like my team in the last quarter has done so much. We've launched a brand new course and filled it. Right. We turned one of my other courses into completely passive that I'll release this fall, right? I'm working on writing a book. Um, 
like I'm just in the middle of re or my team member is redoing my website. Right. But in this next chapter, I'm really feeling like I want a month of, um, resting a little bit and pulling back. And especially since it's summertime, I like to just practically work a little less and spend more time with my kids. And I feel like that, uh, working moms episode hit me at just the right time. Cause it was that reminder of like, yes, like it's safe for me to take a break. It's safe for me to slow down, right? It's safe for me to spend time with my sweet babies. Like this is why I started my business. They're five and seven right now. So, um, it was just, it was just what I needed. Right. And I feel like anything can show us a lesson. I remember like when I was in the middle of a really, really hard, unhealthy marriage, I was watching Call the Midwife and an episode had had a similar impact on me. Like I think as we see characters learning lessons, I just think it's so useful, right? Okay. Anyway. Um, so let's talk about shifting your energy when it comes to selling, right? So for me, first thing I want to say to you is like, it's possible for you to believe that you can feel good selling, right? That you can be excited to sell, that sales can be something that you not just like do, like I said, to make money, but you actually look forward to, right? Maybe that's not how you feel right now, but can you open yourself to that possibility? Because here's the thing, as you grow and scale your business, selling is going to become more and more important. Okay. I think we think it's this thing where we're like, oh, I'll sell for a little bit. And then I'll like, no sales and lead generation and showing up and promoting our product and service is something we will forever do in our business. In fact, the more you grow your business, the more you're going to be selling, right? The more you're going to be showing up and promoting your offers. So if you've been like crossing your fingers, like for me at the start of my business, I remember having this distinct thought. I was like, okay, I just have to figure out a way to get clients without selling. I think I even may have have Googled it instead of asking myself, like, no, how can I just make the sales feel better? Like I can't avoid the selling. So how do I make sales feel really good and be super effective? Right? So I want you to believe, I want you to stay out loud right now. It's possible for me to feel so good selling. It's possible for my selling to be super effective, right? And how we shift how we feel in sales is like how we shift in everything, right? It's the energy and the presence and the expectation we're bringing to it, right? And it's doing it our way. I think the same thing about like exercise, right? For me, in order to enjoy exercise and do it consistently, I've got to really enjoy it, okay? And I'm an Enneagram 7. That means I like variety. So that means like... (laughs) There was a season where I loved cycling at the YMCA. Like I was cycling almost every day, right? It's really what worked for me, right? I really, for me in a gym, I really look for a space where like my kids can be and be safe. That's kind of like my number one priority. I'm like, I could really do anything to exercise as long as like my kids have like a safe space to be, right? As long as I trust the the workers there and everything. So um, anyway, I digress. (laughs) So for me, in order to feel good exercising, right, to get the outcome I want, which is like a healthy body, feeling strong, feeling energized, it has to be exercise that I enjoy. I'm enjoying that process. So for me, in some seasons, it's been cycling, right? For me right now, I am obsessed with bar and Pilates. I do it almost every day because I really like it. I really do enjoy it. Right. And so often if you're not feeling good selling, you may need to ask yourself, do I need to shift the way I'm doing it? Right. Yes. Maybe Susie over there is selling that way, but maybe I don't like that. Maybe I need to find my way to sell. Right. Same thing with exercise. Maybe your best friend is obsessed with swimming, but if you hate swimming, it's going to be really hard for you to be consistent if because you don't like swimming. Right. Same thing with sales. Right. Like Susie over there is doing webinars. Right. Maybe you're doing challenges. Right. Like, again, it's like capiche, capoche. It doesn't matter what it is, but really asking yourself, like, am I selling in a way that honors me and my strengths and my personality, right? And am I allowing myself to enjoy it and really check and look at my energy and my beliefs as I'm doing it, right? Um, I've been trying to be more present with my kids as I've been playing with them, Um because it's not the easiest thing for me to do. (laughs) And so I really have been working on like, how do I just show up and be present and love? It's the same thing, honestly, in sales, right? I try to ask myself, like, and at first, like when I introduced this concept to my clients, they look at me like, eh, but then once they get it, they're like, oh, and that is when you're showing up and taking a sales action, can you focus on, (laughs) hear me out, hear me out, (laughs) hear me out. (laughs) It sounds so weird. 
weird. Can you focus on loving the person? Can you focus on, <laughs> so let's say like one of your goals is to like friend three new people on Instagram a day, right? Just to like widen your network, right? Can you focus on when I friend those three people on Instagram, I have, these are complete strangers. I don't know how their day is going. Maybe they're having a horrible day. Maybe they're having a really hard season of their life, right? Can I commit to, as I'm networking, as I'm showing up, sending a sweet DM and saying, hey, to these three people and really focusing on loving them in that moment? And really trusting that, you know, for me, I trust that like, I'm going to take my sales actions, right? Which is like showing up on sales calls, you know, here on the podcast, mentioning my paid products, right? Like, but I'm going to trust that God is going to turn the right people into paying clients. I'm not really like, if you've been on a sales call, you know this about me, right? I'm not really attached to if you buy right now. I sure hope you do because I bet your life and business are going to get way better when you're in my coaching containers because I've seen it time after time, right? That's my hope. That's my desire. But do I want you in if you don't want to be in? Absolutely not, right? Do I trust you and your heart and your intuition and your timing? You bet your booty, right? And so the goal in sales, whether you're on a sales call, you're sending a DM or you're writing a sales email, right? You're on a webinar, is that you are showing up you're loving, you're sending kindness, positive energy, the world needs more of it. And you're trusting that the right people are going to be a hell yes to work with you. Right? So do you see how the energy turns out different instead of like, oh my gosh, I have to show up and friend through people on Instagram. I have to feel really awkward. What if this person, you know, doesn't reply back to me and they think I'm salesy and spit. We're thinking about us. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. We need to leave our egos at the door when it comes to sales. And we need to start thinking about the other person, right? We need to really look at like, how can I spread love and kindness and trust that the right things are going to come back to me? I know for sure when I show up and I take sales actions consistently in my business, right? It always comes back to me, right? Maybe that person doesn't buy right then and there on the sales call, but maybe they tell their friend and they buy. Maybe that person buys later, right? So it's really attaching to showing up for the sales actions with clean energy. And what I mean by that is just kindness and abundance, right? You can sell and you can be direct, but you can also like not be attached to their decision or not take them personally, right? But I really think through like when I show up, I have this great opportunity to make someone stay better, to really be kind, right? And for me, it's like, let's say someone hops on a sales conversation with me. I hope that their life and day is better at the end of the sales call, whether they buy from me or not. Right. And I've seen this time and time again, where people say like, oh my gosh, like just that nugget that you gave me on the sales call, I went and signed a client. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think it's remembering that there's value when you show up with kindness and with love, right. In, in that for your clients, when you really show up in care and detach from that. I think one of the mindsets that gets sabotages this too is there's this belief that we can't be kind and make money. We can't love and make money. We can't serve and make money. And like, I don't know what sort of weird thing, like I don't know who cooked up that belief, but like, let's just say bye-bye to that, right? Because I have seen in my business time and time again, in fact, the more that you care, the more that you're kind, the more aligned money you're able to make, right? And I think when women, when you don't, don't believe this, that's where you start putting yourself in a bind and you start not charging the prices you're worth. You char start giving stuff away when you shouldn't be, right? Because you're like, oh, I really care about this person. Oh, I really love the work I do. So I need to do this for free, right? Oh, I feel bad charging for this because this is something that I actually like to do, right? We need to rewire our brains so that we can say it's safe to make money doing what you love. It's safe to work with aligned clients. It's safe to work with friends, right? It's safe to do your work that you love and make massive money doing it. It's safe to be kind and to make money, right? Those are not the opposite. They're the same thing, right? Okay. <sighs> Point being, I know this one's a little conceptual, but I wanted to share it with you because I would say it's like one of the number one things that helps me consistently sell in my business is I don't have to worry about, right? Oh, I have to do this action to like force this person to buy from me, right? Oh, I have to do, I really look at it like, okay, I'm gonna show up. 
I'm going to do my part. I'm going to connect. I'm going to put out positive energy. And I trust that God has my back and that the money is going to flow into me. I don't know who it's, which client it's going to come from, right? I don't know which audience member. And that's the thing where like, have you guys heard my podcast episode, like love the lurkers? I love lurk. People are like, oh, people, my audience isn't made up of buyers. Oh, I have the wrong audience. They're made up of lurkers. Like, what is that even? Like, we're all a lurker until we buy. Like, I know I'm a lurker in front of a lot of people, right? Like, it's no, like, what is wrong with being a lurker? A lurker is a responsible buyer, right? Like, I don't know about you, but I like to peruse Target before I just grab something, right? Like, why are we demonizing conscious buyers, <laughs> right? It's okay, right? It's safe for you and for your audience to take a minute before they spend their money with you. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So our job is to show up and take our sales actions, be that vessel of light, right? Really get locked in on like, I'm sending my DMs, I'm showing up, I'm selling, I'm sending my sales emails, and I'm trusting that the right person is going to be at the right time, right? Going to buy from me at the right time. Okay. Hope this was useful for you. <laughs> I would love for you to craft an affirmation that you got from today's episode. Maybe it is simple. Maybe it's, it's safe for me to sell. Maybe it's sales is the portal to money, right? Maybe it's I can serve and sell. I can be kind and make money, right? It's my job to sell. And I trust that as I sell, the money is going to flow to me, right? I can trust for me. It really is like I trust that God has my back and is going to grow my business with the right aligned clients when I show up and do my part and invite and show up with value consistently, right? I would love to hear what affirmation you came away, what affirmation you're coming away with bonus points if you share it with me via email or via Instagram stories. I just love hearing from you so much and what most connects with you. And of course, remember to hop on a free clarity call with me if you want support, really making this your best, most aligned money-making year yet, right? In Sell With Heart, we talk through sales strategy, right? Making sure your core offer is beautiful and compelling for your dream clients that it's messaged, right? Um, but we also talk about clearing your money blocks because it doesn't matter how good you are at selling. If you have beliefs about money that are holding you back, but my love, I want to tell you, it's safe for you to make money. It's safe for you to sell, right? It's safe for you to make money doing what you love. Okay, have a great day. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free and I cannot wait to see you in there.